I'm Kitty Lipsky. I am a member of Teamsters Local 580 and a member of the Lansing Workers Center. I am a union steward and also a delegate to the Greater Lansing Labor Council. So I hear a lot of what's going on right now about the labor unions and organizing in Lansing. Right now we've got, because of two things, the economy, which we're all struggling with, and this movement that's been going for the last few years where the union busting that's out there is very subtle, but it's very effective in a lot of ways. Um, a few years ago, there was a large uh, portion of places where they're going, well, that person isn't really an employee, they're a contractor. They're an independent contractor, so they don't have any bargaining rights as such. They were talking about nurses. They were talking about teachers. They were talking about service workers going, well, you know, you're not really an employee. You're an independent contractor. That is a very subtle union-busting tactic. Um, other things that are going on right now in Lansing, American Red Cross, their workers have been without a contract for more than a year. And nobody wants to be against the Red Cross. I mean, they're charity, right? They're a nonprofit charity. They give all their money away. Not so much. In 2009, the American Red Cross nationwide made $3 billion in their blood services. They're taking something that you and I donate to them using a few dollars to process it safely, supposedly, and turning around and selling it for up to $1,500 a pint, paid for by our insurance. $3 billion to a nonprofit company. Their CEO, an American Red Cross CEO, in salary and bonuses in 2009, made most, almost $2 million. This is a nonprofit, and yet they will not bargain honorably with their workers. But of course, that story doesn't come out. How many of you have been involved in a blood drive? Okay. We're lucky in Michigan because we actually have an alternative. We don't have to have a blood drive at the Red Cross. There is another company called Michigan Blood. <laughs> and they are not union, but at least they are treating their workers much better than American Red Cross is. In fact, American Red Cross, if you donate blood in Michigan, your blood doesn't stay in Michigan. It goes to Ohio for processing. And they can turn around and sell it to Connecticut. I don't think that's anybody who donates blood thinks it's going to stay locally, don't you? Don't you think it's going to stay right here? That's not how the Red Cross works. But nobody wants to see the Red Cross go because they do do a lot of good things, and they have for a long time. But they're very, very deceptive in a lot of ways, too. They no longer are affiliated with Capillary United right here. You know why? Because the United Way wanted to look at their books, and they didn't want to show them. To me, if you don't want to show the United Way your books, what's wrong with your books? So there are some hidden things out there. And their union bus busting tactics, again, are very subtle. They're blood draw people. They're aphoresis. I can't pronounce it right, but... The people who are trained to draw blood safely, they go to school. Most of them have a two-year degree as phlebotomists. American Red Cross uh, were hiring people to replace people who leave off the street, giving them a three-week training course, and telling people it was safe for them to draw blood in 2009, which is the last year that where they have records, American Red Cross was fined by the Food and Drug Administration $42 million because of bad blood. 
you got to think. Why are they making $3 billion on a blood company, paying $42 million in fines, and still won't bargain honorably with their work? There's something wrong there. Other things that are happening locally, um, the nurses at Sparrow Hospital are just now entering their negotiation phase, and there's already subtle pressure on them, and not so subtle pressure, to basically cave, because the fear of this new um, nationwide insurance is going to drive down the profits of a nonprofit hospital. Okay, but their CEO at Sparrow Hospital, again a nonprofit, made almost five hundred thousand dollars last year. You got to wonder why, and their their business has increased by twenty two percent in the last ten months. And yet they don't want to bargain with their nurses. This was another place where they were saying, two years ago, they were telling their nurses, well, we think that you're not really employees, you're a contractor, so we don't have to treat you the same way. And they have other, some of their other uh, unions there, like SEIU, which is the Service Employees International. They do like the laundry and the food services. Um, they had people who were there part hired in as part-time workers working 80 hours a week, no overtime, not accumulating any sick leave, not accumulating holiday pay, not accumulating vacation day because they were still classified as part-time workers. That is also a union busting technique. Um, I work for the city of Lansing and because of the economy we were told all of us are no longer working 40 hours a week. We're working 36 hours a week. That's a 10% pay cut without negotiation. It was imposed on us. As public employees, we don't have a lot of uh, resources out there because by law we cannot strike. Uh, we cannot go through binding arbitration. All we can do is hope for the residents of Lansing to recognize our value and say, listen, you got to start paying your people so that we can get the services we're paying for with our taxes. And the thing is, per capita, we have some of the highest taxes in the state. There has to be a middle ground here where people are getting the services that they deserve. Um, what else is going on? Oh, Greater Lansing Labor Council, which is a, a central labor council, it's a coalition of lots of different labor um, entities coming together and talking about all the common issues that we have. Um, with the election coming up, everybody's a little scared actually, but we are getting out there and pounding the pavement for the Democrats, mostly, because they're the ones who have supported labor most consistently in the past. When you look at some of the Republicans, they come right out and they say, oh, I believe in the right to work. Well, what does right to work really mean? It means that median wages go down like $7,000 a year. It means that um, the money that is spent on education decreases by 20 to 30 percent. It means that people lose their homes because they can't find a job that pays enough for them to buy a house. And right to work is also very insidious because there was a proposal in our state legislature to allow it to be, um, come a part of local ordinances rather than statewide. You know, right to work, and does anybody know what right to work means? What it means? What it means is that someone can choose not to be a member of a union even though it's a union shop and not pay any dues. Well, without dues, the union has no power to bargain because it has nobody that they can actually um, pay to do it. Um, our local Teamsters 580, we are not just in Lansing. We go from Owasso to Jackson. Some of our members are actually in Ohio with the car haulers and that sort of thing. And Two years ago, we had almost 2,000 members. 
now we only have 1,500 because the layoffs, you tell UAW people got laid off when GM closed here, so did Teamsters because a lot of the car haulers no longer had any cars to haul. Um, a lot of them had to go to Kentucky to find work. And then we turn around, we, you know, there's a big government bailout of Chrysler. It turned around, they got purchased by Fiat. And part of that agreement that Fiat had with the United States and with Chrysler when they bought Chrysler was that they would maintain their union contracts. Well, two months later, Fiat announced that they were no longer going to use union drivers for their car hauling. They were going to go non-union. They totally, totally negated the contract that had been pl in place for 17 years. Um, there is a lot of union busting going on out there. And part of the problem is that people are just not aware of what the unions have done for us. A 40-hour work week, that's a union thing. No child labor, that's union. Paid sick leave, that's union. Paid holidays, paid vacation. That's all because of union efforts. And people actually die for the rights that we have been fighting for all these years. Nationwide, the highest union um, membership rate was around 32% in the 1950s, nationwide. But that 32% was powerful enough to make sure all of us had the benefits, or most of the benefits, that unions had provided for their workers. Now union membership nationwide has gone down to about 7%. I think that it has made us all aware. The middle class is declining. There, we don't have a lot of uh, cloud out there to make sure that prevailing wage is adhered to, to make sure that um, discrimination doesn't happen. There's a lot of uh, talk nowadays that, you know, the companies are going to do right by people. Well, they never have. And I don't think they ever will, unless they're made to. Thirty years ago, a normal CEO of a company made maybe two to three times what an average worker makes. In the United States now, a CEO can make 500 times what an average worker makes. And whose work is really more valuable? The person who makes the product, the person who provides the services, or the person who sits on the board and decides which offshore account the profits go into. That's the type of thing that we want to get out there. We want to educate everyone as to the realities of what's going to happen if we let the middle class down. Thank you.